guys, so today we're going to be checking out a robot vacuum made by Nebot and it's called the Nomo. So this is a smart robot vacuum that has a self-emptying bin. And by the way, it weighs 7.6 kilograms, which is about 15, 16 pounds. So this is the way it comes in. Let's go ahead and open the box. So it looks like we have a retail box inside. There's a nice handle. All right, so here we can see what the robot vacuum looks like. So it is in white. Very nice packaging. Some specs back here. Everything that's included. Let's go ahead and open it up. Alright, so here we have a user guide and it's quite thick. We'll check it out in a second. A remote control. And that's to manually control the robot. Also some batteries for the remote. And here we can see the vacuum itself and the dust bin. And below that looks like there's a few more things. A couple extra brushes and an air filter. And that looks like that's everything for the box. So I like the packaging, very simple and quick. All right, so let's see what this dustbin looks like. So over here, it looks like this is where the robot exhausts the dirt into the bin. And then these are the charging connectors. So this is a charging dock slash emptying bin. We got a nice little logo here. At the very top, we got a lid. And it is sealed, there's a rubber seal. And in here we can see a dust bag where the vacuum will suck up from the robot. Down there it looks like we have a large debris filters just in case anything gets past this bag. But yeah, pretty simple. You just put the bag in there and you're good to go. And it does appear like we have more bags included. All right, so there's two more. So we get a total of three bags to start with. So depending on how much dirt, you know, the robot's gonna collect, this should last for a while, technically. And the bags are reasonably sized. They're not large, but you know, it should hold quite a bit of debris. And when you do run out, I'm sure there's more available. So looking at the back of the dustbin, looks pretty clean. There's some venting here and the power cord, which is used to charge the vacuum and also use the suction, pull the dirt out of the robot itself. All right, so I'm pretty excited to see what the Nomo here looks like. So we can see we have a white theme. So we got underneath sensors all around and this is how it's gonna know not to fall off stairs and things like that. We got dual brush rolls. That's interesting, most vacuums have one. These are the connecting points for the charging. We got a swiveling wheel here up front. Here's the manufacturing label. So the robot is powered by two wheels here on each side. So it does have really nice wheels and there's a little rubber tire on top for grip and it does fluctuate here up and down. So over here we have the brush roll and to get to it there's a little tab here. Just open it up and the roll just pops right out. So if you tangle some hair you can pull it out quite easy and clean it up. So as we're going down, it looks like we have a couple more charging pins here. So that's kind of interesting. And right back here, and which makes sense why these are probably the charging ports, because this is where the exhaust is. So the bin is going to suck out of here to get the dirt out of the robot. All right, so let's flip it around. So we can see there's a protective layer here over the nice white glass. And this thing does look really good. So here it looks like we have some function buttons, power, charge, and it looks like maybe dispose. I'm not too sure what that is, but we'll figure it out. Now right in the middle we can see this thing here and this is the, I guess, LiDAR laser detector. So this is what really helps the Nebot here navigate around the house and map where it's at. So we should have really good results with navigation on this thing. In the back here, this is where our dustbin is. And if we pop it open, we can see this is the, where the filter is. And if we open it up, this is the dustbin underneath. So what's cool also is we get a little brush and a cutting tool, which is nice, and it lives right here to clean the brush roll. And to get to the filter itself, there's another door here. Here we can see what it looks like. And we did get an extra one, so you have two. So let's look around real quick. Over here we have, looks like a reset little hole. So if something happens to the robot, you can reset it. Pass through here for a sensor, looks like. More sensors. So this is the front of it, and we have a nice rubber bumper here that bumps into stuff because this will be bumping into things and this is kind of like a big switch here. It all moves. We got another sensor there, another one on the side and some venting over here. So, All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and plug in the bin and then power on the robot and get him charging. All right, so I got it set up over here and in the place where I think it's gonna be most useful for us, which is the dining area. So I did plug it in the wall and there's a little light there on the bottom. You guys can see it's kind of pulsing right now. So let's go ahead and hit the power button on the robot. So maybe we need to hold it. Okay. So you do have to hold it for a few seconds and it comes on. So I get, All right, so it actually said something and now the light is pulsing an orange color. 
But before we do anything, let's just go ahead and send it to charge. So I'm going to click this charge button and see what happens. Start recharging. So it's looking for its charger now. And of course, it's probably going to find it, I would think. It's right next to it. You guys can see that laser LiDAR is turning in a circle. And also, if you guys notice that it decided to charge from the front instead of the back, and I think maybe that's how it charges, but when it empties itself, it goes from the back and docks like that, so. All right, so while the robot's charging, let's go ahead and put the batteries in the remote, and it does include two AAA batteries. Slide the cover on, and now we have a little remote. That's really nice that it includes one because here you can do all the basic functions that you would need. Like we have a dedicated charge button. If you want to send it straight to charging, the navigation buttons here, the pause and the go. And there we have that button again that we saw in the robot, and this is actually spot cleaning. So it'll start cleaning in that area that it's at. And then we got the trash here, which is the dust bin. I think this forces it to go and empty itself. And here we have the mute button. I guess that turns off the talking. And below that we have the suction control. So we got the least and then medium and high. So normally you'd use it on medium, but you know, if you need extra power, you can use it on high, or if you just want to be more conservative, you can go on the small suction. But yeah, pretty nice basic remote and could be quite useful. All right, so here we have the user guide, and the reason it's this thick is because there's multiple languages. It tells you all the functions of the robot and how to use it. More detailed information, but it also includes this quick start guide, which gets you started, and it's also in multi-languages, but we do need to go ahead and download an app and this is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and install it, open it up. I guess we'll have to create an account. So after you create the account, this is where it takes us. So let's go ahead and add a device, get started. So basically it's gonna connect to our Wi-Fi. turn on the Nebot. I don't know if it's on right now or not, it's charging. So now we're gonna log in into our home Wi-Fi. So now we need to connect manually to the Nebot robot, which is right here. Now we can go back, click next again. The device is connecting. And now it found it. I can hear the robot talking. Network connected. All right, so it looks like it's connected, or at least that's what the vacuum is telling me over there in the corner. So there might be a process here for an update or something. We're going to wait. It says a couple minutes. All right, it looks like everything is good. So here we have the robot, so let's click on it. Okay, so now it wants to do an update. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's click update. And it's updating. And the robot again is talking over there that it's updating. So it looks like it's gonna be pretty quick. I'll be back later. Or maybe not. Okay, it just said upgrade completed, even though this thing still looks like going through something. Okay, there it goes. All right, well, that was easy. Let's go back. All right, so here we can see our home page, and what's quite impressive already, or at least what I can see, is that so far where the robot's been, this is what it's seen. And it's only been on for a few seconds going to the charger. So here we have the battery percentage, cleaning time, so you can see it cleaned zero minutes so far. The amount of area it's cleaned, zero also. Here we have a command of sending it to charge. Scheduler, smart maps, empty bin, and settings, and then we got a big clean button, and if we click that, it's probably gonna go cleaning. So let's click on schedule here and check it out. So here we can schedule timings by clicking this plus button here and adjusting the timing and the dates, and also choosing zones, which you can create to clean at certain times. And also we have do not disturb, which is really cool because you can set a certain time for it not to you know work let's click on smart maps so yeah smart maps lets us see what the robot knows so far and right now it doesn't know much but we'll revisit this and and once we have more information we'll we'll check it out and actually we can make zones right here from the smart map let's check out what settings is so here we can set the power rating from low medium to high also the frequency of emptying the dustpan either more or less it's on more right now and then the talking voice which is english right now and if you didn't want that I guess you could just put the volume all the way down and that includes you know all the other kind of sounds it makes too so I guess we'll leave it on for now here we have a button that says find knee butt when I click it the vacuum itself just says I'm here so all right pretty cool yeah, very nice. Also, I forgot more options over here. If you click on this little smiley face or whatever that is, you can see more of your settings and your account. So here you can choose the language you want. That's what's available there. Also, the units could be important. Well, actually, I guess they are because I need square feet. You got the app updater and the firmware update also. Looks like we're up to date. And that is everything. All right, so Nebot is fully charged and we can see that the light is white now and it's pulsing. So let's go ahead and use the remote and get him started. So we're just going to click play here and it should start cleaning. And there it goes. All right, so it's going to do like a spin around to assess the area. And 
And there it goes. Well, let's see how he handles all these chairs and everything. So I think it's just calculating what it's where it's at. So it does know it's stationed pretty well. Let's see how he deals with these bulls here. Okay, yeah, not very good. So we're going to have to mark this area probably a no-go zone for him. But oh, Yeah, looks like it's going to be mapping it out and starting to clean. And there's some dirt there. Let's see if he picks it up. All right, he did pick that up. That's actually a pretty big chunk. All right, he got that other seat also. So far, so good. So this place here is pretty complicated. You guys can see there's a lot of chairs. So there's a pretty big shell over here. Let's see if he picks it up. Wow, look at that. Actually picked it up. So yeah, right off the bat, pretty impressive. And seems like it really knows what it's doing. And I think that LiDAR up there is really helping him out. At least better to understand where he's at and what he's doing. So, All right, so I'm just going to let him run around for a while here and uh, we'll see what he comes up with. So let's take a look at the app and see what Nebot's doing. So this is the dining room area right here that he just cleaned so you can see all the paths that he took and you can see all the chairs and that's the table in the middle so yeah pretty accurate representation here and then there's a pass through and he just got out and he wandered around and so he found the kitchen so this whole area here is the kitchen you can see here how the lighter already knew where everything was kind of or at least the walls and it's adding new information as it goes so it's pretty incredible how well this thing is able to navigate and know where everything is. So this is the center part of the kitchen. And that's where he is right now. So yeah, pretty impressive how he knows exactly where he is. And that LiDAR there seems to do a lot of the work. Knowing what's ahead before he even gets there. So technically he shouldn't be cleaning here because he's already cleaned here. But he hasn't cleaned in between the two pillars. As we can see here, and this is where he's at right now. So he's concentrating on where he hasn't been yet. So as far as navigation goes, yeah, it's very impressive. And it's the best I've seen in a robot so far. Alright, so let's pause him. Then he stops. Let's see if we can control him manually. And right, look at that. So depending on what you push on the remote, that's what he's going to do. So yeah, if you, you know, needed to clean a specific spot, you can, or at least take them to a specific spot, you can manually move them around. Speaking of spots, let's try this spot mode here. It's probably not the best place to do a spot clean, but let's see what happens. So it's supposed to be a more targeted area. So he's going to clean around himself I guess a few feet looks like about four feet or so so I guess he just keeps cleaning the same area maybe eventually it'll stop but looks like he's making a second pass on it Let's go ahead and pause it. And you guys can see his little feet here, or brushes, are pretty dirty already. So yeah, I guess he ran into some pretty dirty things. And also has some dirt on him already too. So yeah, that's one thing about the white here is you're going to be able to see all the little specks and stuff. But maybe that's good because you can keep them clean. So I'm kind of curious how much we've collected so far. Out of curiosity. Okay, whoa, we even got some ants in there and, and a millipede. Wow, that's crazy. Alright, well, did a good job. So I'm kind of interested to see it empty itself. So let's click on this trash can button here in the middle. For some reason it's not doing anything. Maybe we got to let him start. All right, well, let's send him to the charger for now. Let's see if, how quickly he gets there. Yeah, it looks like he knows exactly where it is because it's going straight for it and going quick too. 
lining up. Yeah, I'm doing a full 360 for some reason. Okay, so he's backing up now, maybe. Alright, so maybe it'll actually empty itself since it's backing up. There it goes, guys, and it's pretty loud. There's a, quite a bit of air coming out the back. But yeah, it's quite loud. But it didn't take it long. And I was going to flip around and charge. Very interesting. Alright, well you guys saw there. He just emptied himself and started charging again. So let's actually see how much actually got sucked out. Okay, so the bigger particles kind of stayed some of them, but mostly this smaller, very fine particles got sucked out. So, wow, not bad. So I guess eventually all this stuff will go, but very cool. And this is the biggest plus for this thing is that, you know, it does empty itself out. It's honestly one of the biggest hassles of having a cleaning robot like this is that you constantly have to clean it out. But like this, you don't because it just cleans itself out. So we can see that we got 83%. I guess I did reset everything, but it was about 30 something minutes that it was running. So yeah, let's send it back out. And look at that, we have zones. We got clean all or choose zones. So we're gonna just click clean everything until it figures out the whole house. And then we can make some zones. And if we needed more power, we can go to strong or less power. I'm not sure why you'd want less power, but if I switch it to that, this thing got really loud. But that's gonna drain the battery really quick, so probably not worth it unless you have a really dirty or smaller area but I think for this house regular should be just fine now it should go into the strong mode once it hits carpet and we'll check that out once it gets there also guys I wanted to mention that these little brushes here that spin in circle they're pretty cleverly designed because they're flexible at the arms here maybe you guys can see here but yeah it's like a rubber so if it comes to like something that it tries to you know snatch on or wrap around itself it kind of alleviates it and I noticed that it does pretty well with cords like if it comes to a cord you know instead of wrapping it around it it might just kind of flex around it so yeah pretty nice brushes all right guys so the robot is on the carpet now and it does appear to boost the vacuuming power yeah so it turns down I guess to medium when it's off carpet and then when it goes on carpet it goes to a higher one yep there it goes I, I just heard it ramp up also guys thick carpet is no issue for it it got on it really easily and now it's the dog is messing around with it but yeah it slows down for the dog it doesn't just run it over So yeah, you can see it has no trouble whatsoever turning around on the carpet, so it's got plenty of power. And here back on the app, we can see that it's pretty much marked out everything as far as the whole cleaning area that it's going to be cleaning. So it's cleaning the last bit up here, and that's pretty much all that it's going to have to do. So, so this is the dining, the kitchen, and then this is kind of like an entry room. And this is the piano area here, so that's what it's cleaning right now. It still hasn't cleaned the bathroom over here and it mapped it out but it never went in completely so it probably will go back there. And also over here on the straight line is we have steps. And so here he comes, let's see what he does. Okay, so he already knows where the step is, which is interesting. Yep. And interestingly enough, our battery is at 50% and we've been running for 77 minutes. But we started with not a full battery, if you guys remember. It seems like battery life is great on the medium setting. What's interesting is as I'm standing there, you can see those little dots over there. That's actually me. So the LiDAR is actually updating it live of what it sees at the moment. So it's constantly evolving with, you know, the things around the house. So if, let's say you move something, eventually it's going to realize that and update the map. So it uses old information while also collecting new information constantly and updating what is where and things like that. So kind of like if a chair moved, you know, it would know that, that there's a chair there. So All right, so here it is at the edge. And it's definitely not falling off. We've had a vacuum robot before that once in a while fell off this edge, but 
the tricky part is this carpet. So this one seems to be doing really good. So let's go back to the app here and, and you guys can see the whole layout and the last cleaning that Nebot did there. So this is pretty much all his cleaning area and it's about 1,000 square feet. Now I went ahead and played around with the app a little bit and if you guys see those little red areas there, this is a no-go zone and they're really easy to add. So if we go to smart maps, so you guys can see what I've added so far, I added two no-go zones and a dining area. And the reason I added the dining area is because a lot of times I just want the robot to clean here, which the dining is set here on single pass. So if we wanted the robot just to do the dining and then, you know, go back to charge, we can choose that. Or we can do double pass and just get him to clean here extra. So let's say if there's areas of the house where you want, you know, extra clean, let's say in the kitchen here, we want it to always do a double pass, let's just say. So what we're going to do is we're going to name a new area. We're going to call it kitchen. Click the plus to add. And you guys can see we get a little box there. And you can move the whole box around by just dragging it. And then if we zoom in, there's corners you can drag around. So, so we can say this area here, which is basically the whole kitchen, we can make this as double pass cleaning. So, And same thing for these areas. If you click on it, you can change it to anything you want. So this is the laundry room, and I want him to go in there. And then another room here that he's not allowed to go in either. So yeah, very intuitive app and quite easy to use. So you just click the save here, and it saves it into its memory. And now when he cleans, he's going to do exactly what you know we told him to do. So as far as the app's concerned, it's very intuitive and works very well. All right, guys. So the Nebot's at the charging station. And I have to say, this robot is pretty impressive. We've had other robots in the past and they were definitely not as good as this one. Not only is it intelligent with its navigation, and I think this is one of its strongest points, it does seem to pick up very well also, so no complaints there, especially on floors like this, it does an excellent job. And probably one of our favorite things is the auto disposal that it does because the most annoying thing about having a robot vacuum is keeping track of cleaning them out all the time. And this really alleviates that problem. And you can probably wait weeks before you have to even check to see if this thing is you know somewhat full or not so that alone makes it a more enjoyable process of owning one of these and if you've been thinking about getting a robot vacuum this one here i think hits the sweet spot with the features that it has for the price that it's at so i don't think you would be disappointed with the performance of the kneebot if you want to pick up the kneebot nomo for yourself i'm going to have some links in the description so check that out and if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more things i do on this channel then stay tuned and as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace